Hi everyone, future me here from the editing room, which is the same room as the recording room, but that's besides the point. Unfortunately, the recording for the real part 20 didn't work. Since the video only contained a bunch of side quests and not usually interesting ones either, I decided not to replay the whole two hour segment. If you want to look up the missing side quests in my original Let's Play, they are UNC Besieged Base, UNC Espionage Probe, UNC Exogeny Facility, and UNC Colony of the Dead. The only interesting one was UNC Besieged Base, which is the Paragon mission. I had a lot of trouble with that one, and it took me something like 10 attempts to get through it without any casualties. The problem was that the hostages were just standing there. They weren't moving at all, which I don't know if that was a glitch or not. But it leaves them in a position where it's really easy for them to get killed by accident. I had to very carefully lure the enemies into positions where it was safe to fight them, and leave the squad mates behind since they were just a liability. The only other things of note are that I finished all the collection missions, and got some pretty nice equipment, which I do show off in the beginning of this video. Anyway, I'm sorry for the missing section, but for now, I hope you do enjoy this final video. So, back to past me. Welcome back! Our journal is empty, glitches notwithstanding. So all we have left is to go to Ilos and finish the game. I guess I will scan the rest. I don't need it for money or missions, but uh, it's still free XP. one in the other asteroid belt. Oh, there is another one. wonder how common that is. Profian data disk. And magnesium. That would have been a, another light metal, I guess. All right. The refuge system. Pangea Expanse. And because we're not allowed to come back here, I'll look at uh, all the planets first. There's actually nothing to scan, so it doesn't matter. Shepard, may I speak with you? I was just thinking about you. I have been thinking about you too. And what we are about to face. I do not know what is going to happen on Ilos. I hope we will stop Saren, of course, but... Part of me fears we are already too late. There is something I must tell you, in case we fail. We're not going to fail. I promise. Please, I am not looking for comfort. Saren might already have the conduit. It is time to be completely honest with each other. These could be our last moments together. Our last chance to show each other how we feel. I want this to be special. We don't have to do this. Not unless you're sure. I have never been more sure of anything in my life. Will you join with me, Shepard? Let our bodies and minds unite. Just tell me what to do.
by the goddess. That was incredible, Shepard. You were incredible. Five minutes ETA to the Mew Relay. I had better go. Duty calls. You would not want to keep Joker waiting. Shepard, whatever happens on Ilos, I just wanted to say... Thank you. For everything. Sex scene in high res. I guess. Still pretty tame. Better than the fully clothed dry humping that Mass Effect 2 does with uh, some of the characters, anyway. Ah, uh, Commander? We've got company. Have their sensors picked us up yet? Well, stealth systems are engaged. Unless we get close enough for a visual, they won't have any idea we're here. Picking up some strange readings from the planet's surface. Take us down, Joker. Lock in on the coordinates. Negative on that, Commander. The nearest landing zone's two clicks away. We'll never make it in time on foot. Get us something closer. There is nowhere closer. I've looked. Drop us in the Mako. You need at least 100 meters of open terrain to pull off a drop like that. The most I can find near Saren is 20. 20 meters? We'll never get in close enough for a drop. We have to try. Find another landing zone. There is no other landing zone! The descent angle's too steep. It's our only option. It's not an option, it's a suicide run. We don't... I can do it. Joker? I can do it. Gear up and head down to the Mako. Joker, drop us right on top of that bastard. Which he'll do pretty much literally. Everybody's just really stressed about this all of a sudden. It's kind of uh, weird. Um, my final team of the game, and I'm going to go with uh, Liara because I like bringing her to Ilos for her. You know, she is still a archaeologist after all. Um, even though I guess. Most of what we're seeing there is Inusano, and not actually Profians, but whatever. And also, uh, we've been over how useful Biotics are. And um, I'm going to bring Tali, because we'll be facing quite a lot of Geth as well. And I like Tali, so sue me. to get inside this bunker before Saren finds the conduit. There is no way we're getting past that door with brute force. Saren found some way to open it. There must be some kind of security override somewhere in this complex. We will have to find some way to get it up and running again. Or, you know, um, this door was already open and he just closed it from the inside and we're just screwed. This definitely looks better than I remember. looks pretty... Like, it's much more clear that we're looking at overgrown ruins than I remember it being. Looks pretty cool. Alright, um... Liara has two points. Barrier and... First aid, I guess. Tali is good. We've got some pretty awesome equipment. Not only does everybody have Spectre Pistols, I have really awesome armor, really awesome Biotic Amp. Liara has my previously also pretty obvious, uh, um, pretty uh, great uh, Biotic Amp. And also some pretty decent armor. Not as good as mine though. 
She also has a decent Omni tool, but it's still kind of a side thing for her because I don't have any points in electronics on her. And Tali has the uh, Savant 10 Omni tool, as well as Colossus 8 armor, which is also very good. And of course, another Spectre weapon. So, I'd say we're ready. And we can't go that way. Oh, what the? He was, he was getting impatient with me. How rude. Why don't you go fight your friends? Wow. That didn't work that well because... Uh, We kept shooting at him, or my squad mates kept shooting at him. Which caused him to not go back and fight his friends. We can hack somebody who is further away, that would be better. That was a great shot, dude. There, that will have a much better effect. Isn't there like a armature here somewhere? Oh, I think the hack went wore off. Um, let's just kill him. Funny as hacking is. Um, I just decided not to do it again. Who's oh that's down there, isn't it? That's not actually over here. Oh yep, I was right, there's an armature. There's two. Can I hack those? I'll try. Looks like it! Oh, that's awesome. They're fighting each other. This is hilarious. Well, let's, um... a hand to the hack one, I guess. Okay. That was, uh, not one of my greater ideas. Just stand here. Fine, we'll revive you. Armatures can be lifted and are therefore not as big of a threat anymore. We've got right hand advantage here. Right hand advantage is peeking out from the right. So they can't hit you, but you can hit them. Um, Really expecting to find anything of interest. And it's not like I need the money. But still, um, there's like a bunch of different ways to go here. There's an elevator. I think this is this elevator actually open? No, there's n it's not. It's where we come out later, I think. Um, I think you can go down and around, or just go the straightforward way. I don't honestly remember what's better. I'm gonna go this way. The enemy is tempting me. Oh. 
There's a lot of dudes here. You go fight someone else. Say my oh, oh, somebody just um, overheated my weapon. Um, I found out I can't actually switch weapons. Will you stop moving. Liara killed him. Um, wonder if you can hack Gef Primes. That's really good Turian armor. Too bad we don't need it. Uh, Garrus is not here and he won't get any other opportunities. else here is there just some statues of what I believe to be the Inusano because they are definitely not Prothean based both on the collectors and the Javik uh, we're going this way to the trench um, there's just a random trooper hiding over here else though. I really love this one statue, they just have it everywhere. Armature control. I think that causes them um, to either shut down or fight for you or something? I don't really remember. by itself, so hacking didn't really do anything. I think in the other games, AI hacking is much more, you know, actually uh, stopping them from attacking you. Whereas here, the only thing it really does is um, drive them Berserk, in which case they may still attack you. It's just they'll also attack their friends. this take me? Oh, here. It's not much of a shortcut at all. But I started here. Uh, I guess we got that armature control, though. So, that may have been worth something. So that's back where we've already been. This is the way I want to go. No. No, it's not. This is the way I want to go. Is there anything here? It's also that, that that armature control was for the two armatures that I've already fought. I'm not sure. At least everything we're picking up is high level. Might as well just convert all of it to all the gel as I get it, because it serves no other purpose. I 
I kind of quite like the lighting here, even though it doesn't really seem to match the outside lighting. Where's this coming from? Or is it the GEF terminal that's lighting this up, or is it just the... Uh... I guess this is light from the GEF terminal? I don't know. It does kind of create a cool looking effect. I guess I want to get over here eventually. What's over here then? Is that a sneaky detour? Or a way to flank them or something? Yeah, I think it is. Nothing in the corners here. Pretty sure I can hack the destroyer now. The rest of them are just troopers. So none of them are really all that interesting. Oh. There's some over there. How rude. going here. You're all just fighting the hack destroyer. That's great. That was the wrong way and it's really not really necessary anyway. Alright. It's still weird to me that this game essentially has an inverse difficulty curve. Especially those first few um, UNC quests are so hard with enemies that rush you and that are, you know, essentially. Like, like there's, bar there's barely any good cover there. Um, I don't think we can see them from here, dudes. And then you have like the Krogan Battle Master fight, which at that point in time is just really, really difficult. Uh, not, it's a lot better in this version, but up. Um, but originally it was so even like the hardest fight in the game, really. <laughs> Never tried leaving that till later in the game, because, you know, I want to... Um, is that armor by any chance better than what Liara's wearing? It can't be better than mine. Nah, kind of a wash. Unless I happen to find another Colossus armor, it's not really going to be worth it, is it? But you know, yeah, by the time you get to the end, especially if you do all the side quests, you have all this equipment, so all your powers recharge really quickly. You have good armor, so you're not, you know, so prone to just randomly dying anymore. Can I get anybody from here? There's one. He's moving around too much, though. Again, a problem we can solve. Uh, 
So like I barely even re really need to worry about cover other than you know the occasional s cheap sniper death, which can happen even if you are in cover, just leaning out to do something. Like how even the uh, ancient Inosanan used the exact same buttons that everybody else in the galaxy does. Where are we going? Here. Yeah, this game just gets easier near the end. At least if you do everything. Mass Effect 2 and 3 do not have that problem so bad. They do still have it to some degree. And like I said before, in this game, if you, uh... This place still has power. It must be running off its own generator. This must be the command center for the entire complex. Saren's troops must have sealed the doors from here after you went inside. We will have to figure out how to disengage the security lockdown if we ever want to get inside that bunker. Um, that's one hell of a leap of logic. Yeah, like I already said, insanity doesn't really change that equation. Oh, oh no, he's running towards me too, too much. To be usefully hacked. You're a prime. Liara is dead. Well, just because the game's easier doesn't mean you can still sometimes make mistakes. This would have gone fine if the guy I hacked didn't decide to run at me. I guess we should take out the Prime first, if it's true about those status buffs that it gives to other... Okay, the Destroyers just really don't want to fight their friends. Okay, well that could have gone better, but it also could have gone worse. Oh yeah, and you can have these guys fight for you. That doesn't mean running into uh, the battlefield. Still gives me XP, so... Might as well do it. Can't even shoot at them. Um, another possible tactic here, I guess, is to go up here. It's kind of a shame you have these like interestingly designed battlefields, and then we really do all of the fighting from the part we came in. Quite like the lighting effect here. Because there's really not any reason to do otherwise. Is this wet here? Yeah, it is. Uh, 
Um, this is where the controls are. Isn't there a crate or something near here somewhere? I thought there was. I guess not. Come, Saren already has a head start. We have to go find him before he reaches the conduit. Unless he's already found it. Then we're just walking into a trap. That is a chance we will have to take. Hold on. Something's happening. Too late. Unable to... Invading fleets. No escape. It sounds like some kind of message, but I don't recognize the language. It is probably in Prothean. This recording must be 50,000 years old. No wonder we cannot understand it. But Shepard can. The message is all broken up, but I recognize some of the words. It's a warning against the Reaper invasion. Of course. Between the beacons and the cipher, an understanding of the Prothean language would have been transferred into your mind. Not safe. Seek refuge. Inside the archives. What's it saying? Can you make out anything useful? Fault Reapers. The Citadel. Overwhelmed. Only hope. Act of desperation. The conduit. All is lost. It's not very clear. It said something about the conduit, but it's too degraded to help. We should go. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped. Um, we'll see about that. We'll try just the same. I still need to do something here? No, I think that's it. Just need to head to the second elevator, which is through here, I think. Kind of confusing because the security panel was still marked on my map. So I thought maybe I needed it for something. How impressive that some of this still works. Although maybe Saren and Geth may have repaired some of it, I guess. And this is back. At the beginning, we need to go back to the Mako, which is over there. Um. Good idea. The firepower will come in handy. Um, you don't have to, I guess, but. Pretty sure you can't make the final run though. The timed run to the conduit. Would be kind of impossible without the Mago. I have spent my life studying the Protheans, but I never dreamed I would discover anything like this. This bunker might have been the last refuge of their entire species. Just imagine what mysteries it might hold. Imagine what secrets it might reveal. Please, try to remember why we're here. Saren, the Conduit, the fate of the entire known galaxy? I am sorry. I was swept up in the moment. I just hope we have the opportunity to study this place in detail after this is done. I thought Saren would have set some kind of trap or ambush for us. They must have been in too much of a hurry. Or we just have yet to run into it. Yeah, I don't really want to keep moving because it's easy to cut a conversation off here from what I remember. Um, 
And yeah, too bad we never get a chance to study this in uh, greater detail. Or even that it ever gets mentioned again. What are all those things on the wall? Some kind of containers? They look like stasis pods. The Protheans probably tried to keep themselves alive through cryogenic freezing. Something must have gone wrong. This bunker became their tomb. The pods are dead as well as anyone inside. All of them? There must be hundreds of those pods. What was Saren expecting to find here? There's nothing left but corpses. A good question. Also a good question is why would they build stasis pods into the wall like this? I mean, it's not what I would do. Yeah, like I was saying, um, Liara changes jobs between games, so she kind of uh, stops caring, I guess. I don't really know what direction I'm going right now. I guess that's the downside of the time control sometimes. Somebody here. Not anymore. I love the atmosphere here. The lighting is definitely improved. The music is great as always. I wonder if the game lets you proceed past this trap if you don't have the Mako, if you decided not to bring it. What is happening? It's a trap! Saren must have set an ambush! I do not think Saren is behind this. I don't know how you know that, but you're right. It's the menu music. I have studied the Protheans for decades, but I have never felt this sense of foreboding. What will we find down there? Whatever we find, be cautious. If this were simply an automated trap, Saren would have triggered it as well. It is, of course, Vigil's theme. I also found it interesting that they picked this theme for the menu kind of shows you what they consider to be more important. Conveniently, Liara and Tali will be able to understand this one, even though they couldn't understand the other. You are not Prothean, but you are not machine either. This eventuality was one of many that was anticipated. This is why we sent our warning through the beacons. Looks like some kind of VI program. Pretty badly damaged. I do not sense the taint of indoctrination upon any of you. Unlike the other that passed recently. Perhaps there is still hope. This is incredible. An actual Prothean VI, and I can understand it. I have been monitoring your communication since you arrived at this facility. I have translated my output into a format you will comprehend. My name is Vigil. You are safe here for the moment, but that is likely to change. Soon, nowhere will be safe. Are you some kind of artificial intelligence program? I am an advanced non-organic analysis system, with personality imprints from Kesad Aishan, chief overseer of the Ilos Research Facility. Why did you bring me here? You must break a cycle that has continued for millions of years. But to stop it, you must understand, or you will make the same mistakes we did. The Citadel is the heart of your civilization and the seat of government, as it was with us and as it has been with every civilization that came before us. But the Citadel is a trap. The station is actually an enormous mass relay, one that links to dark space, the empty void beyond the galaxy's horizon. When the Citadel Relay is activated, the Reapers will pour through, and all you know will be destroyed. How come nobody ever noticed the Citadel was an inactive mass relay? 
The Reapers are careful to keep the greatest secrets of the Citadel hidden. That is why they created a species of seemingly benign organic caretakers. The Keepers maintain the station's most basic functions. They enable any species that discovers the Citadel to use it without fully understanding the technology. Reliance on the Keepers ensures no other species will ever discover the Citadel's true nature. Not until the relay is activated and the Reapers invade. Kind of impressive that it learned enough of our language to not only speak flawless English, but also know the names we use for things like the Citadel and the Keepers. How do the Reapers survive out in dark space? We have only theories. The researchers here came to believe the Reapers enter prolonged states of inactivity to conserve energy. This allows them to survive the thousands and thousands of years it takes for organic civilization to rebuild itself. But in this state, they are vulnerable. By retreating beyond the edges of the galaxy, they ensure no one will accidentally discover them. They keep their existence hidden until the Citadel Relay is activated. Now we begin to unravel the mystery that we've been following the entire game. I love the way you, like, replaying this. There's so many indications of what's going on. So many carefully planted details that all line up with this story. The Reapers can wipe out the Council and the entire Citadel fleet in a single surprise attack! That was our fate. Our leaders were dead before we even realized we were under attack. The Reapers seized control of the Citadel, and through it, the mass relays. Communication and transportation across our Empire were crippled. Each star system was isolated, cut off from the others. Easy prey for the Reaper fleets. Over the next decades, the Reapers systematically obliterated our people. World by world, system by system, they methodically wiped us out. Yet when they gain control of the Citadel in Mass Effect 3, they will mysteriously not follow that plan. The war was lost. If you'd surrendered, they might have let you live. No offer of surrender was ever given. Our enemy had a single goal. The extinction of all advanced organic life. Through the Citadel, the Reapers had access to all our records, maps, census data. Information is power, and they knew everything about us. Their fleets advanced across every settled region of the galaxy. Some worlds were utterly destroyed. Others were conquered, their populations enslaved. These indoctrinated servants became sleeper agents under Reaper control, taken in as refugees by other Protheans. They betrayed them to the machines. Within a few centuries, the Reapers had killed or enslaved every Prothean in the galaxy. They were relentless, brutal, and absolutely thorough. The whole information is power theme is present a lot in this uh, game. And it does make me wonder whether or not the Shadow Broker was intended to fit into the Reaper story as well. Because, you know, here we get told about the Reapers using information from the Citadel. And if they would ha were to have, you know, someone who collects data from all sources and everybody is forced to broker with in order to not fall behind, but no one ever really gains a real advantage from, that would fit perfectly in them, you know, needing to have information to attack everybody. And certainly some Reaper-based agent or whatever being behind the Shadow Broker other than the single individual that it eventually turns out to be would have made a little bit more sense and would definitely have made the Shadow Broker more interesting. On the other hand, I mean, I also don't really like it when absolutely everything in a universe is tied to the one thing that's going on because it makes the universe feel small. So, maybe it's better the way it is. Although I do still think that they could have picked a more interesting 
background for the Shadow Broker, then... Oh, it's just the Yog. Regardless of whether or not they wanted to tie him to the Reapers. I don't understand. Where did the Reapers go after they conquered your people? Our worlds were stripped bare. Harvested by the indoctrinated slaves. Everything of value, all resources, all technology was taken. Certain that all advanced organic life had been extinguished, the Reapers retreated back through the Citadel Relay into dark space, sealing it behind them. All evidence of the Reaper invasion had been wiped away. Only their indoctrinated slaves were left behind, abandoned. Mindless husks, no longer capable of independent thought, the indoctrinated soon starved or died of exposure. The genocide of the Protheans was complete. Some of how the uh, Reapers operate makes them sound like the Borg, I think. What do the Reapers get out of this? Why do they keep repeating this pattern of genocide over and over? The Reapers are alien, unknowable. Perhaps they need slaves or resources. More likely they are driven by motives and goals organic beings cannot hope to comprehend. In the end, what does it matter? Your survival depends on stopping them, not in understanding them. Well, understanding them definitely would help to stop them. You said you brought me here for a reason. Tell me what I need to do. The conduit is the key. Before the Reapers attacked, we Protheans were on the cusp of unlocking the mysteries behind mass relay technology. Ilos was a top secret facility. Here, researchers worked to create a small scale version of a mass relay, one that linked directly to the Citadel, the hub of the relay network. The conduit is not a weapon, it is a backdoor onto the Citadel. How did you manage to stay hidden? All official records of our project were destroyed in the initial attack on the Citadel. While the Prothean Empire came crashing down, Ilos was spared. We severed all communication with the outside, and our facility went dark. The personnel retreated underground into these archives. To conserve resources, everyone was put into cryogenic stasis. I was programmed to monitor the facility and wake the staff when the danger had passed. But the genocide of an entire species is a long, slow process. Years passed, decades, centuries. The Reapers persisted, and my energy reserves were dwindling. You should have fought. We were a few hundred against a galactic invasion fleet. Our only hope was to remain undetected. I began to disable the life support of non-essential personnel. First support staff, then security. One by one, their pods were shut down to conserve energy. Eventually, only the stasis pods of the top scientists remained active. Even these were in danger of failing when the Reapers finally retreated back through the Citadel relay. There were hundreds of stasis pods out there. You just shut them down? You killed them? Um... Yeah, it is monstrous in a way, but the alternative would have been to let everyone die. In this vain hope that maybe the Reapers would leave on time. He couldn't let everyone die. Better to sacrifice some so others could live. This outcome was not completely unforeseen. My actions were a result of contingency programming entered on my creation. I bet they didn't tell the non-essential staff about this contingency. I saved key personnel. When the Reapers retreated, the top researchers were still alive. My actions are the only reason any hope remains. When the researchers woke, they realized the Prothean species was doomed. There were only a dozen individuals left, far too few to sustain a viable population. Yet they vowed to find some way to stop the Reapers from returning. A way to break the cycle forever. And they knew the Keepers were the key. As much as I wouldn't advocate for this kind of solution, I mean, it's... There really was no other choice here. It was either that, uh, or... You know, let everyone die. And that would have screwed us up too, because... Everything we're doing now is only possible thanks to... Um... 
those few scientists that survived. I still don't understand what's going on here. Why is Saren trying to find the conduit? The conduit gives him access to the Citadel and the Keepers. The Keepers are controlled by the Citadel. Before each invasion, a signal is sent through the station compelling the Keepers to activate the Citadel relay. After decades of feverish study, the scientists discovered a way to alter this signal. Using the conduit, they gained access to the Citadel and made the modifications. This time, when Sovereign sent the signal to the Citadel, the Keepers ignored it. The Reapers are trapped in dark space. Saren must have some plan to undo everything you did. The one you call Saren will use the conduit to bypass the Citadel's defenses. Once inside, he will transfer control of the station to Sovereign. Sovereign will override the Citadel systems and manually open the relay, and the cycle of extinction will begin again. Is there any way we can stop them? There's a data file in my console. Take a copy when you go. When you reach the Citadel's master control unit, upload it to the station. It will corrupt the Citadel's security protocols and give you temporary control of the station. It might give you a chance against Sovereign. Wait, where's the Citadel's master control unit? I've never heard of anything like that. Through the conduit. Follow Saren. He will lead you to your destination. If the Reapers are trapped in dark space, how did Sovereign get here? It is logical to assume the Reapers would leave one of their own behind after each extinction. A sentinel to pave the way for their inevitable return. Like those in dark space, Sovereign probably spent most of the last 50,000 years in a state of hibernation. Periodically, it would wake to analyze the situation. Keeping its existence hidden, it would evaluate the state of galactic civilization. And when the time was right, it would signal the Citadel and usher in the next Reaper invasion. But this time the signal failed. The Keepers did not respond. Sovereign's allies were trapped in the void. Alone, it was forced to try and discover what had gone wrong. Sovereign's the largest ship in the galaxy. Why all this secret? Why not just attack the Citadel? Sovereign is not invincible. Revealing its true nature would have united the forces of every organic species against it. Even a Reaper couldn't survive such odds. But the Reapers are patient. They will not rush into the unknown. Sovereign could have been planning this for centuries, moving deliberately, gathering allies. Slowly, it has assembled the pieces of the puzzle, working through agents to keep itself hidden. Saren is the most visible pawn of the Reapers, but I doubt he was the first. Now Sovereign has grown bold. Whether from confidence or desperation, I cannot say. But it is determined to reopen the portal to Dark Space. Yeah, I think from what we learn later, it, it, this really has been planned for a very long time, even before the Arachni Wars. What about the beacon on Eden Prime, and the one on Vermeer? What were they for? At our apex, the beacons spanned the breadth of our empire. We used them as a single galaxy-wide network to transmit data and communications rapidly from world to world. Virtually all the beacons were destroyed during the invasion, but once the Reapers were gone, the survivors here on Ilos decided to risk sending out a message. We knew it was unlikely there were other survivors, but if there were, we wanted them to know about Ilos. We wanted to give them hope, so a message was sent across the network. You could have exposed yourself to the Reapers. In truth, we didn't expect any of the beacons would still function, but we had to try. If there were survivors, we had to reach them. The message was meant for our own people. It was coded so only organic beings could interpret it. We still didn't understand the power of Reaper indoctrination. We never realized it could lead an agent of the machines, like Saren, to this world. But it has also led you here. So perhaps we did not fail after all. The only reason it led anyone here at all is because of some... Um, 
great luck with the cipher through the Thorian. Without that, um, nobody would have been able to find this place anyway. So when the Reapers created the Citadel, they created the Keepers as well? A more likely scenario is that the Keepers were one of the early harvested civilizations. Perhaps the very first. Perhaps they responded well to indoctrination, or the Reapers simply bred them to be obedient. In any case, they were left behind to operate and maintain the Citadel. But the Keepers are no longer directly controlled by Sovereign or its ilk. They evolved so that they only respond to the signals emitted by the Citadel itself. When the Protheans altered the Citadel signals, they broke Sovereign's hold over the Keepers. Now, they are completely harmless. I guess the idea is that the Collectors are similarly repurposed to serve the Reapers' purposes? Sovereign must have realized organic races were difficult to control. A likely hypothesis. The Keepers evolved in an unanticipated direction. Non-organic servants like the Geth would be more predictable. They didn't really evolve. They were deliberately altered by outside fo forces. I mean, I doubt the Keepers are really susceptible to regular organic evolution for them to keep functioning over presumably millions of years. What happened to the survivors from the Conduit Project? They used the Conduit to gain access to the Citadel, but the Conduit is only a prototype. The portal only links in one direction, so they were trapped on the station. I do not know what became of them then. It is unlikely they found any food or water on the station. I fear they suffered a slow, grim death. I only know they succeeded in their mission to seal the relay. Your presence here proves their sacrifice was not in vain. I wonder if they would have tried to leave a more obvious message behind, you know, just paint a giant, you know, picture on the wall to um, try to explain without words the Reaper attack for future civilizations to find. Although even if they tried that, it's likely the Keepers would have cleaned it up in the intervening thousands of years before anybody made it to the Citadel again. Saren's got enough of a head start. Grab that data file and let's go. Shepard, are you sure? Who knows how much longer Vigil will be here? Even now the projection is weak. This might be our only chance to speak with it, our only link to the knowledge of the Protheans. It is the opportunity of a lifetime. Um... Yes, and unfortunately, I guess we again didn't record any of this. And so later when people co go to check out where the visual is still here, they don't think they find it. Part of the reason why the Council decides to be idiots in Mass Effect 2, if I remember right. It might know something useful. I will provide whatever information I can. My data banks, however, are limited to information directly related to stopping the Reaper invasion. I mean, even though we said that, we can't actually talk about anything else. I've got the file. Come on. The one you call Saren has not reached the conduit. Not yet. There is still hope if you hurry. There is still hope, I guess. taken in by the Reapers just as we were. They failed. Just like my people. But they also gave us a chance to save ourselves. We must hurry. Yes, everything we're doing here is thanks to the groundwork the Protheans um, have laid, who were fortunately not all as uh, much of an asshole as, uh, <laughs> as Javik ends up being. So we owe them everybody's. What, what ha what's happening? We owe them everybody's lives. Hmm. 
despite the uh, council's attempts to uh, undo everything we're doing here. I wonder if anyone ever tried to do this whole section on foot. Somebody must have at some point. We know these archives are supposed to be underground. We can still see sky from here. It's kind of interesting. Remember yeah, where the... Um, Oh, it's still quite far away. Need to get all the way over there. I'm like, I don't remember if this is a fight or if this is a... This is where we're supposed to run. And it's a Colossus. Nothing we haven't dealt with before, though. wonder if they made any changes to the fight with Saren at the end. Oh, that was once again the wrong button. still think... Um... Hello? That's not good. I had no option to go back into the Mako. Still think control is kind of an awkward button to push. Again, if you stop caring about XP or anything, it's... Uh, I'm going the right way, aren't I? Yeah. It's really... Not that hard to just run past everything here. Isn't there like something to pick up here somewhere? Or am I misremembering that? I guess I am. Although, you will want to make sure that you're not so damaged that uh, you can't make it past the final run. Because there you don't have time to stop and fight, obviously. And the Mako doesn't really improve as far as I'm aware. I don't know if it's ability skill with your level or something like that. If they do, it's not really noticeable. Or if they do, they scale it to the same degree that enemies do, so... And the result is kind of the same. There, There's the conduit. the conduit. It's incredible. We don't have time to admire the view. We have to get through that relay, and these Geth aren't going to make it easy on us. Meanwhile, at the Citadel. This should be even easier with the 
the help of the thrusters. Hang on, things are going to get a little rough. Especially with my driving skills. <laughs> this isn't hard at all now. Our shields are kind of low, but we made it. I guess you don't need any kind of special tech to Critical be able to use a mass relay. Across all monitored systems. Please begin emergency evacuation Alas, poor Mako. We knew it well, and we will miss it. Kind of. I guess a... An object traveling between relays also does not physically interact with real space. Because, you know, we're inside. There's no obvious holes. Also, according to Vigil, we're like minutes behind Sovereign, so he worked fast. And the mass relay statue turns out to be an actual mass relay. A fun little secret hidden in plain sight. We have to stop Saren. That we do. What's even burning here? Just the floor? Husks. Not really a big problem. I do love that, you know, the attack takes place in this area of the game that we know very well. We spend a lot of time here. The Presidium is experiencing severe system malfunctions across the entire level. All non-emergency personnel must evacuate immediately. Give me a rundown of the damage. We have lost all primary power to the level. Environmental controls are not responding. Class 3 fires are burning in sectors 2, 3, 6, and 7. Civilian casualties are high. I am also detecting numerous unauthorized synthetic life forms throughout the station. They are believed to be hostile. Please approach with caution. What happened to the Council? In accordance with standard emergency procedures, the Council has been evacuated to the Destiny Ascension. What about Captain Anderson and Ambassador Udina? What happened to them? I have no information on the status of specific individuals. Once the current crisis has been resolved, a complete accounting of casualties and survivors will begin. Where's Saren? Former Spectre agent Saren Arturius is nearing the vicinity of the Council Chamber. A warrant has been issued for his arrest, though Citadel Security is unable to respond at this time. Gee, I wonder why. Come on! We need to stop Saren before it's too late! Please begin emergency evacuation procedure. All right. And of course, since there's a fire and an attack happening, let's take the elevator, because that's safe. Wait, there are no, not even any stairs here. What are you supposed to do in the event of a fire? Shoot the keepers, it's not their fault. The Citadel's closing! They're sealing! Don't let the enemy ships inside the arms! Oh no, 
while Sovereign just plows through them. They're no threat. Yet somehow we've never gotten this view from the elevator while riding it. I didn't know any better, I'd say Sovereign is trying to mate with the Citadel. That didn't work. I'm out of ideas. Um, anyway. Still an imposing sight. The closed Citadel and then Sovereign right there. Last thing I'd want to do is run towards the I'm very happy they didn't like have a mini game where they you have to dodge the arms dropping down. Very sure Mass Effect 3 would have done that. Glad they didn't go that way. Because it would have been ridiculous. Wait. I guess the elevator was still sorta of working? Not anymore. shoot him effectively. There's a rocket trooper back there. Oh, there he is. He doesn't want to come out. Make him come out. Is there more gap line there? Not really. So that was not very effective. Uh, this is in the death. How are we doing? Still 40,000 XP left to go, there's no way. I doubt we're even getting to 29. Let alone 30. Well, at least we got higher than before. I thought they said they made it so you could make it in, in one playthrough. Well, if so, what are you supposed to do? Because... Um, I don't really know of anything else we can do. Here, lift will just kind of outright kill them, I think. I've learned my lesson to not try to. Because uh, I think. Yeah, they just float off. Because obviously, bionic powers needed to be more powerful. Not sure if this will take them high enough. Not. 
So we'll just shoot him. Because there's not... I don't know, is this supposed to be zero gravity or just low gravity or what? I don't think he's coming back down. I should not use any other powers on them then. If I use lift, it's pretty much guaranteed to kill them. Um, where are we? Where are we going? What's happening? Oh, sniper. Um, there's nobody behind you, so. And we're going to be using... Bye. We're going to be dealing with the, the turrets here. And there seems to be uh, the accidental metadata usage is back. Why are there even turrets on the outside of the Citadel Tower? Like, when are we afraid of an attack happening from down below? Well, this scenario, I guess, but... Didn't really help that much. Now they're just fighting each other. And, well, they're all clustered like that. You have to activate the turrets to fight the... For some reason I thought you had to deactivate the turrets, but you actually have to activate them to fight the, the dropship, that's right. Can I hack you through that? Another turret. Um, can we move? Maybe. Let's make this go a little faster. Now I can sabotage you. Shoot through there. Through their shields, I don't actually know. Um, okay, well that worked. He bounced off. There's like a part here where there's a tunnel you can take. guys 
left to rush you. But hey, the harder they run, the faster they fall. Or something along those lines. Bye. I'm not allowed to save. I'm pretty sure if I tried to hack him, he would have just ran at me anyway. I'm getting a lot of inventory. Nothing I want. Do you actually die if nobody shoots you? That's what I want to know. Yes, you do. Is this where the... Yeah. This is where we can take a... Uh, easier route. Where we don't have to deal with the those turrets. Bye, Felicia. I don't really know what my squad mates are doing, but they're not here. I have like a... no. I have like a rally button, don't I? Rally around! Yes, it's C. We'll go this way. Here's there's a roof, so we have to shoot him. I'm being somewhat careless, losing my shields, but The Battlemaster, which I guess is the same. Oh, you think I would just let you walk up to me? This is why I'm like, if uh, we had Liara at the uh, Battlemaster fight, it would have made that so much easier. Especially if you're not a biotic. Still not allowed to say it. And there is our destination. Access to the tower. Which also has looked better. And it's also somehow on fire. What are these floors made of? No, no. That didn't work, but it did use it, which is annoying. I 
Baron himself also is not too difficult if you have Biotics on your team, because you can basically just keep them off the ground. Especially with the recharge times that we have now. I would like to attack something that's better than a trooper, but I'm not sure if it's uh, in the cards. Think that worked? Yeah. I know it's not the fastest way of killing them, but it is the funniest. He still just... He's already on fire, maybe shooting incendiary ammo around here is actually not the greatest idea. Nope. I did remember reading somewhere that the AI was supposed to improve, but you know, if they did, I have not really noticed it, I have to say. Go for the enemies or my squad. I guess the shotgun using squad mates, Tali and Rex, are not as prone to just run ahead. Maybe? That's about the only difference. I can tell. Implant you? Are you insane? I suppose I should thank you, Shepard. After Vermeyer, I couldn't stop thinking about what you said. About Sovereign manipulating me. About indoctrination. The doubts began to eat away at me. Sovereign sensed my hesitation. I was implanted to strengthen my resolve. Now my doubts are gone. I believe in Sovereign completely. I understand that the Reapers need organics. Join us, and Sovereign will find a place for you, too. Sovereign's controlling you through your implants. Don't you see that? The relationship is symbiotic. Organic and machine intertwined. A union of flesh and steel. The strengths of both, the weaknesses of neither. I am a vision of the future, Shepard. The evolution of all organic life. This is our destiny. Join Sovereign and experience a true rebirth. What's kind of funny is what he's describing is basically the synthesis ending. Sovereign hasn't won yet. I can stop it from taking control of the station. Step aside and the invasion will never happen. We can't stop it. Not forever. You saw the visions. You saw what happened to the Protheans. The Reapers are too powerful. Some part of you must still realize this is wrong. You can fight this. Maybe you're right. Maybe there is still a chance for... for... <laughs> the implants. Sovereign is too strong. I'm sorry. It is too late for me. It's not over yet. You can still redeem yourself. Goodbye, Shepard. Thank you. Fair 
Aragon plus 24. Very useful at this point. And so we save ourselves one confrontation. Not both. Actually, I like to make a real save here. I don't think I've ever actually used it, but... I still like to do it. Vigil's data file worked. I've got control of all systems. Quick! Open the station's arms! Maybe the fleet can take Sovereign down before he regains control of the station. See if you can open a communications channel. The Destiny Ascension! Main drives offline! Kinetic barriers down 40%! The Council is on board! I repeat, the Council is on board! Normandy to the Citadel! Normandy to the Citadel! Please tell me that's you, Commander. I'm here, Joker. We caught that distress call, Commander. I'm sitting here in the Endura sector with the entire Arcturus fleet. We can save the Ascension. Just unlock the relays around the Citadel and we'll send the cavalry in. Are you sure about this, Shepard? Human casualties will be very high if you send your fleet in now. This is bigger than humanity. Sovereign is a threat to every organic species in the galaxy. True. That's why you can't waste reinforcements trying to save the Council. You must hold them back until the Citadel arms open up and the human fleet can go after Sovereign. What's the order, Commander? Come in now to save the Ascension, or hold back? Why am I making that decision? Shouldn't, like, Admiral Hackett or, or someone like that? Um, yeah, as, as much as, um, you know, the Council really don't deserve to survive, I also don't really like the direction things take if you let them die, plus, you know, their replacements are just um, as big as an asshole. And you don't get to listen to Armin Chamberman anymore. So, this really makes, the, the, this game really frames it like, oh, if you let the council die, humanity will be in control. But, you know, there will just be a new council, so didn't even make that much of a difference. I guess we'll save them again, as thankless as they are. Opening the relays now, Joker. We need to save the Ascension, no matter what the cost. I hope the Council appreciates this. Don't worry, they won't. Alliance ships, move in. Save the Destiny Ascension. Apparently I give orders to Netroll now. Commander, we're picking up reinforcements! It's the Alliance! Thank the Goddess! Make sure he's dead. Can I just throw a shoe at it? He's dead.
We'll see about that. Also, Saren Husk still looks ridiculous, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, why are you using pistol? We we'll have to fix that as soon as we can. Um, yeah, it still looks ridiculous. Not as as ridiculous as the Human Reaper in uh, Mass Effect Two, I guess. But yeah, definitely. Uh, Uh, kind of a silly design still. Are you not being singular deed? That'll work. We have much that does. Use a weapon that doesn't suck, Tali. Wait. There's like. There's Geth here. Where's Saren? I lost Saren. I lived, oh, there he is. He's behind the crate. Like to keep people alive, if at all possible. As long as we keep him off the ground, it's not too big of a deal. down no matter what the cost. Um, there's Geff trying to get in. Not here yet, though. And he recharged his shields during the... Are you just stuck up there? I'm not sure what's happening. I think this fight with Bionics is he has no chance to actually do anything against you. And we'll lift you again. Have a grenade. No. Or not. Where is he? Yeah. Is he lift him again? I guess the Geth are kind of... Um, sure. <laughs> Don't really know what happened there. I guess the Geth are supposed to help. Um, you like stop you from doing this so easily, but I don't know why they're just stuck up there. I 
think Biotics might kind of break this game. Over, you're safe now. Where's the commander? Ambassador, Captain, Commander Shepard. We have gathered here to recognize the enormous contributions of the Alliance forces in the war against Sovereign and the Geth. Many humans lost their lives in the battle to save the Citadel. Brave and courageous soldiers who willingly gave their lives so that we, the Council, might live. There is no greater sacrifice. And we share your grief over the tragic loss of so many noble men and women. The Council also owes you a great personal debt, Commander, one we can never repay. You saved not just our lives, but the lives of billions from Sovereign and the Reapers. Commander Shepard, your heroic and selfless actions serve as a symbol of everything humanity and the Alliance stand for. And though we cannot bring back those valiant soldiers who gave their lives to save ours, we can honor their memories through our actions. Humanity has shown it is ready to stand as a defender and protector of the galaxy. You have proved you are worthy to join our ranks and serve beside us on the Citadel Council. Counselor, on behalf of Humanity and the Alliance, we thank you for this prestigious honor and humbly accept. We will need a list of potential candidates to fill Humanity's seat on the Council. Given all that has happened, I am sure your recommendation will carry a great deal of weight, Commander. Do you support any particular candidate? Um, that scene where Shepard walks out of the rubble, as cliche as it might be, still gives me chills. The music um, helps a great deal, of course. And this is kind of a, a hard choice in hindsight. I mean, it's hard and it's not hard. 
It's not hard because there's no way I would ever choose Udina, considering what happens in the other games. And it's hard because I know Anderson doesn't want the job and isn't happy with the job if you give it to him and um, then in the end Udina becomes, um, becomes counselor anyway. But yeah, Udina is an asshole who will eventually end up betraying humanity. So there's really no other option here. We need someone with the courage to stand up for what he believes in. Someone like Captain Anderson. Him? You must be joking. Anderson prefers to let his fists do the talking. Only with you, Ambassador. Only with you. Are you sure about this, Commander? The Captain's a soldier, not a politician. Who would just pick anybody else? Maybe Admiral Hackett want the wants the job? We've already got too many politicians on the Citadel. The Captain would be perfect for this job. I think it's an inspired choice. The Council would welcome him with open arms, should he accept. I'm honored, Counselor. As humanity's representative, I'll do everything in my power to help the Council rebuild. Sovereign's defeat marks the beginning of a new era for both humanity and the Council. Sovereign was only a vanguard. The Reaper fleet is still coming. Hundreds of ships, maybe thousands. And I'm gonna find some way to stop them. Shepard's right. Humanity is ready to do its part. United with the rest of the Council, we have the strength to overcome any challenge. When the Reapers come, we must stand side by side. We must fight against them as one. And together, we will drive them back into dark space. And that is, once again, the ending of Mass Effect. There's not much I can say about this game that I haven't already said. It's Mass Effect, one of my favorite games ever, with a new coat of paint, so what's not to love? Overall, they did a good job on the visuals, I think. From the trailers and screenshots, I was afraid the game would be too bright, washed out, and covered in lens flares. That was fortunately not the case, and most of the changes do look good. The quality of life improvements to the gameplay are also very welcome. The game does have its fair share of glitches, some old and some new. I encountered a few, but I've heard reports of way worse, so hopefully we'll get a few more patches to improve things. Otherwise, it's still the same game. It's a game I love, and a sci-fi world that's up there with my favorites, including Star Trek and The Expanse. It's an amazingly detailed, well-thought-out universe with deep lore that is woven into the game at every level. It's a game about knowledge and exploration more than gunfights. It's a shame Mass Effect 2 and 3 took the game in such a drastically different direction. While they retained the amazing universe and characters, much of the new stuff, especially Cerberus, failed to really build on the foundation of the first game, which ultimately led to the disappointment of the ending. That makes Mass Effect 1 truly unique. The sequels, while I still enjoy them a lot, just don't scratch that same details-oriented sci-fi itch for me. Unfortunately, those games were much more mainstream and commercially successful, so I doubt we'll ever see anything like Mass Effect 1 again. As such, I'll take any excuse to relive it. As I already said, I will not be covering the sequels in my videos. By the time I'm recording this review voiceover, I've actually already finished playing them. I still enjoyed them and enjoyed the upgraded visuals there too, though the difference is not as extreme. There are still elements in those games that are tremendously well executed, such as the various character stories, and particularly the Krogan Genophage and the Geth Quarian conflict. And I loved experiencing them again with better quality. Playing Mass Effect feels like coming home to me. It's an amazing series, truly unrivaled as far as I'm concerned. If you're a fan, I definitely recommend the Legendary Edition. 
The enhancements are nice, and it's nice to have all the games and all the DLC, except for Pinnacle Station, in one place. Of course, if you already own all the originals and aren't as big of a fanatic as me, you could always wait for it to go on sale. Anyway, that's it for Mass Effect. Keel us a lie, and thanks for watching.
Thank you.